For those of you out there who really love C and wish there was a language just like it that overcomes some of the pitfalls of C, I have a language for you, and that is the Go programming language. And Go is, I will say, just an overall great and well-rounded programming language. Although it was <laughs> developed by Google, it's, in my opinion, it's one of the least Google things out there, if you know what I mean. Like, usually Google has, like, usually everything associated with Google is bad, but honestly, it's probably one of the good things that actually came out of, the, out of Google. But let's actually... I'm actually go ahead and show you why well, it's such a great language. So let's let's just make a simple hello world program. So let's do oh, hello.go. And first things first is you want to declare the package for Go. And really, if you're making a normal executable, you can just do the main package. And that will compile their code to an executable. But if you're making your own custom packages, you can rename it from main to whatever you want. But for now. We're going with main, and we can import a. We can go ahead and import other packages too. Um, so let's import the format package to format our strings and print them to the terminal, and then let's write our main function. And if you see before your, or really most programming languages, you're, you'll be right at home because main function main functions are almost in every language, honestly. So that's called format and print. LN. And let's go ahead and add hello world. And here we go. And let's go ahead and, oh, let's go ahead and write the file. And this is basic hello world program. Only seven lines of code, which isn't that bad. So let's actually compile it. And first things first, uh, the default Go compiler. I wouldn't really use this compiler because actually I'll show you why I wouldn't use it. Um, let's go ahead and build the Hello World program. And let's take a look at how big it is. Our Hello World program is almost two megabytes. That is a lot. That is ridiculous. Two megabytes for a Hello World program. That is why I don't like using this compiler. Uh, of course it works like a normal Hello World pro program. It probably runs slower, but that's why I recommend using uh, the GCC Go compiler, which actually I'll go ahead and show you how much better it is. So let's compile that. And as you can see, you went from two megabytes down to 55 kilobytes, which honestly is, is a bit bigger than a C, pro a C program, but it's still <laughs> leagues better than the default Go compiler. So I like sticking to that compiler. So let's actually run this. And as you can see, just a normal Hello World program. Nothing fancy. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. Uh, let's actually dive deeper into some of the syntax and uh, other things that go. So I'm going to make a, an example file, example.go. And of course, we're going to declare the main package. And just for, for now, let's just import format. Keep consistent. But let's actually declare some variables and functions. So I'm going to declare the variable uh, number number one, and let's set that equal to let's actually let's actually declare that as an integer. And as you can see, the syntax is a bit different for Go. It's the, it's the variable code word, the variable name, and then the type at the end, which is a bit different, but East after a while. Uh, so let's declare number one and let's set equal to five. And let's declare a another variable, number two. And this time we're not actually going to declare the type because we don't have to. The compiler, let's actually set it equal to 12, but the compiler will actually guess uh, what type you or what type you want the var variable to be and could probably even optimize it. So it could be a pretty good thing. So let's leave it at that and let's declare our own function. So I'm going to call this function sum of squares. And let's have, let's give it two arguments. We're going to give it x, an integer x, and an integer y. And of course, putting the 
type after the variable. It's a bit weird, but like I said, you get used to it. Same goes for functions as well. The return type for functions is at the very end. So we have our sum of squares function, and let's return, of course, the sum of squares. So return x times x plus y times y. And there we go. We're just returning the sum of squares. <laughs> pretty, pretty simple. And let's actually integrate that into our main function. So func main. And go ahead and format and print it. And okay, so let's actually call the sum of squares function sum of sum of squares. And let's our, let's pass our let's pass our two arguments number one and number two. So number one and number two. There we go. And Let's go ahead and save this and compile it and see what happens. Oh, there we go. And successfully compiled. Let's run it. And as you can see, it gives us 169, which is the sum of both the scores that we gave it. So really with this knowledge, let's actually write a pretty useful program. I'm going to write a program that will grab HTML pages from the internet. And I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how it works. So let's remove our example program. And let's create a program called git.go, or get.go, sorry. Uh, and of course, I'm going to declare a main package. And we're going to actually import multiple different packages. And to do that, you use these parentheses and put the packages you want to import in these, or not, yeah, in these parentheses. So let's import format. Let's also import OS as well as IO, uh, IO util. And this will, this will import the sub package from I, from IO, which is IO util. And let's also import net.h or slash HTTP. And this will import, this will let us basically access web pages. So let's go ahead and write our main function. So here we go. So first things first that we want to do is we want is we want to pass the program the argument of the web page that we want to get. So, so we're gonna have to assign the argument to a variable. So let's do URL. Let's set that equal to OS dot args and set it to the first argument. And so now we have our, U, our URL in a variable. So next, let's actually go ahead and get the information from the web page or the web server. So let's do, let's, let's declare a variable called respawn and error. Let's do error like that. And we're going we're going to set both of those to HTTP .git, and we're going to get the URL for that. And one thing about Go is that functions can actually return multiple variables. And so we're actually setting respond. We're actually sending respond to the variable which is um which the um which HTTP get http.get URL returns. And an error will actually get the value of the error if there is one. And so this is one of the things that's kind of different about C is that you're actually able to return multiple different types or multiple different variables. And so now that we have that, let's actually write an if statement for when we encounter an error. So if error does not equal nil, and nil is Go's version of null, so if the if an error exists, then oh, then we're going to we're going to actually print out uh, to os dot standard error, and this prints to your operating system uh, operating system standard error output, and let's just say error. 
just give it a big old error and go ahead and OS dot exit one. There we go. And that will go ahead and exit with the error status. And let's go ahead. So now that we have the information from the server, let's actually go ahead and get the HTML information from the page itself. So let's do body and error set that equal to io util dot read all and respond dot body. So this will set body equal to uh, the body of the response, which is going to be the HTML page. And of course, we're going to set error if there's any errors at all. And so let's go ahead and add a, let's go ahead and actually, um, oh, here we go. Respond dot body dot close. And we're going to actually going to close the um, uh, body itself. Uh, this is just to make sure that nothing sketchy happens. And let's go ahead and oh, let's go ahead and have another error function just in case something else happens. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually copy, <laughs> do a little bit of laziness and just copy this. Oh, there you go. Let's actually just copy that error function. It's the same thing. Um, and so now we're going to actually go ahead and if no errors have occurred and everything goes to plan, we can actually go ahead and just print out the web page. So format.printf. And this is the same, this is basically the same printf you would see in a C program where you can actually pass it, we can actually pass arguments into strings. So body. And there we go. And so this is our finished program. So, of course, it imports the packages that we need, assigns, assigns the URL from the argument that we give it, gets the information from the server, and if, it, if of course, no errors happen, if an error does happen, it'll exit and say error. If an error does not happen, it'll go ahead and fetch the body contents and uh, close the connection. And then if it encounters an error again, from you know getting the body contents of the web page, then sends an error. But if everything goes up to plan, it'll print the HTML web page. So let's quit. And let's go ahead and compile our program. So compile git that go to git. And no errors, that's good. And so let's actually run the program git and let's get a web page. Uh, I'm going to give it Mm, let's give it a random web page. Uh, for example, gnu.org. And as you can see, it is successful. We have, it's a really long web page. In fact, it cut off, but as you can see, we got the gnu's web page, or gnu.org's web page. And we can actually, we can actually go ahead and actually put this into a file. So let's put that into gnu.html. And let's view that. Uh, and as you see, we have the GNU, GNU web page. Pretty nice. So we're actually able to use this programming language very in a simple way in order to actually get useful programs. And so let's actually let me actually view this web page for a second. See if it works. Yeah, here we go. It's of course it doesn't copy the CSS. We have to do more to actually do that, but it actually grab the web page and we can get a very simple HTML web page. And so that's that's really the Go programming language. Of course, there's way, way more than what I showed you. There's you can have structures like C. You can have pointers, which are really useful. Uh, maps, really a um, bunch of other things. Go also works with uh, by default with Unicode and characters like that. And really, there's a lot more stuff than just what I showed you. This video is just to, just to pique your interest and teach you a few things. Really, if you want to learn Go, I recommend 
honestly going out on the internet, finding things, finding more things about it, or heck, even buying a book. I have a where is it? I have a book over here. Ah, yes, the Go the Go programming language. Great book. Definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn Go, great language. Uh, definitely recommend it. So I'll see you later.